Hey guys, and welcome to the Alabama Saltwater Fishing Report coming at you on location from the Mobile Boat Show. We got a special guest with us today, along with Captain Patrick Garmerson and Butch Steer. We're joined with Captain Joey Landrino. Joey is the creator of the Slick Lure, which has taken coastal Alabama. It's a lot of buzz about the Slick Lure lately. Yeah, a lot of buzz. By yeah. storm. So, Joey, welcome, and man, uh, I got to ask you just tell me a little bit of the history of the Slick Lure. How'd you create this thing? Through necessity, I fished artificial lures all my life. I uh, grew up a little bitty kid, and I knew what I wanted, and no no one was, it wasn't on the market. I have a place on the West Coast in the Big Bend area of Florida where I target trout of 25 inch, you know, category and larger during the winter time. Trophy trout. Trophy trout, gator trout, mm-hmm. cold water conditions, super clear water, and real shallow water, a foot and a half to three feet. And I was using, um, off-the-shelf lures, slow-sneaking jerk baits, hard plastic and soft plastic, hanging trouble hooks. And over a period of time, I, I was able to pattern these big fish on certain bottom, on certain tides that were holding bait. Right. But you might have a pile of rocks. I was showing uh, Patrick some of those rock piles on, uh, on, on Google Earth, where the water, you only have a foot and a half above these rocks. And if you would target... 10 feet in front of the rocks, it was like fishing in a desert. You had the fish in the trash. Mm-hmm. If you fished the lure too slow, you would get snagged real often. You fished it too fast, they wouldn't hit it. Right. So it was, it was in between. So one day, I'd lost like five or six or seven you know, plugs. It was just the fact I was getting stuck. And, and You were trying to fish it slower, the bait sinking down into the debris. Couldn't fish it the way you wanted to fish it because the lures weren't correct. Exactly. Exactly. So you were damned if you did and damned, damned if you didn't. Damned if you didn't. So if but you he got knew stuck, the fish were there. Right. You could see them. The, the little, what I call a little flippy mullet, those little six to eight inch little mullet get mm-hmm. over that hard bottom. It's a little warmer because the rock absorbs some heat. Tide comes over. It's perfect setup. They're in the back of a cove, and they're just sitting there flipping every once in a while over these rocks. And every once you'd see a little silver flash, that, that silver belly would about a 90-degree turn, and that's a big trout eating one. So you throw it in there, twitch, twitch, they'd hit it. But a lot of times they were in between the crevices of the rocks. And if you got in there, you'd get stuck. Mm. So you had to break off or go in there and blow the whole thing up. And then you, your whole pattern was blown for that day. I had a long commute to work. I was mm. living on the water. And one day, just windshield time, no radio, no nothing by myself. The image and the idea of the slick came to me driving home. That's awesome. When was this? Uh, when did this start? That was in uh, 2015 oh, ish. The winter of 2015. So what was that like? You said, I mean, you said it came to you. Did you you think it's got to be buoyant enough to stay there in the were, water five, column? What, what was the, what was the criteria? There, there were five five objectives I wanted. I wanted a big profile that I had confidence in. Okay, it's got a bait's got to be big enough for a, a big, big trout, trout to be interested in. Big, yeah, I had to be able to cast it at least 70 feet minimum. Or 80 feet, okay. 90 feet. So it had long, to be heavy. Long cast heavy. and a profile that would that wind could not wind wouldn't catch. Okay. A lot of four to four and a half, five inch soft plastic have a real flappy tail, mm-hmm. and it act, the wind catches it, mm-hmm. and then it, it throws it back in your face. So I wanted a profile that could I could cast like a bullet, and it had to be the hanging troubles had to go away. Right. And I wanted a slow sinking, twitchy, jerky action. Right. So I wanted it long cast, slow sinking, big profile, and it had to be weedless and, and or I could be able to fish it in, in the rocks. You know, where I'm at is a lot of the middle of the uh, big, big national seagrass preserve. So it's carpeted eelgrass. During the summertime, that grass breaks off. You get these big mats. So weedless was a must. It, and you, can't, you can't fish right. it in the summertime for reds because you just can't. So I wanted it. We, that was the five objectives. And coming home, and I just, I just said, yeah, man, that's it. Take all the hardware off of this stuff you've been chunking. Yeah, and make, I like it. Yep. Just take that's the cool. hardware out. I wanted a big hook slot because I fish um, actually Procure Super Gels. Okay. But I wanted a big hook slot. So big, you use that slot to kind of hold Not some only of that. that, but it helps for the hook set. Okay. And the other thing, number six was... See, you're learning something right now, aren't you, Patrick? Yeah. I wanted also a premium hook. You can go get a $15 hard plastic lure, yeah. top of the line, yeah. mm-hmm. and they got 
cheap hook. You got to go spend five dollars yep. or six dollars. Be rusted out in a season for 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 replacement hooks. Right. For so sure. So one of my, one of that was one of my pet peeves is if I do this, I want a premium hook. Right. And that's what I came up with. And we, it took me six months to find a guy to help me put this thing together. And we drew it up in CAD, 12, 15 pieces, went over it meticulously. And then we finally decided to, uh, we, we came up with what we wanted. He cut it out of one cavity prototype mold. And I used a little two ounce hand injector. So did you nail it the first go? The first, we, we never modified it. Really? <laughs> really? Wow, that's pretty cool. It worked out. I wanted more of a, <laughs> point, I wanted a, I wanted more of a pointed nose. I wanted the nose to be a little bit more because that would give it a little more water coming over the top and the bottom. It would give it a little more jerky situation, a little jerky action. Yeah. We couldn't do that because the plastic wouldn't go through the, the diameter of what I wanted for the nose. So we had to modify some things and give and take, and we finally came up with that. See, the lure is a half inch high. The hook slot is a quarter of an inch deep. The back of the lure is a quarter of an inch of solid plastic. He had to come up with a short shank, extra wide gap hook mm-hmm. to have enough clearance with the hook slot. And that, that hook, that short shank is perfectly balanced. The shank of the hook acts as a keel, as a sailboat. Yeah. And you can twitch it and it will stay basically ver- vertical. So you, you developed this thing for your unique area, your unique set of conditions. You didn't really know... Nope. That people like Patrick were going to take this thing no. and apply it to other other I, I areas, it, other bodies of water. Fishing it in eight, ten, twelve feet of water with a weighted hook was not even in. It was that was in in the ether zone. That was not my objective. My objective was to target those big fish on that hard bottom so I could play my game. Well, it's I, funny I, to hear you say that because you you hit, you said something. And it reminds me of something Bobby Abrascato has, has talked a lot about. We talked a little about it some, Patrick, this past week on the on the podcast. And that's that's stealth when it comes right. to, right. to yeah. Oh, yeah. fish in yeah. general. But right. what I'm hearing you say, and I think a lot of people miss that point, is when you're talking about trophy-sized fish, right. little things matter. And being able to stay away from those fish but still reach those fish yeah. is a big deal. Oh, it's we, a huge deal. I mean, you I mean, see a lot, a lot of the right? fish, a lot of the big fish that I catch are at the very end of the cast. It's like the lure it's slaps the on top of the water, first couple twitches, boom. Richard says the same thing. Yeah, my water, you can see six feet, eight feet, eight feet deep. And mm-hmm. my, my flats, it's, it's, it scares the hell out of you. You're running in two feet of water, and someone that's not used to it will, I mean, they're, they're biting the sea. Right. I mean, they're like. Right. Holy moly! I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, we're not used to that no, around here. You know? Definitely not. So that bigger profile and that real slow cadence with that twitchy jerk, and if you notice when you're fishing in shallow water like that, the lure will do this jerk, and when you pause it, the head will come up a little bit and it'll go off to one side or the other. It almost like it has a mind of its own, like it wants to steer off this side this time, and then next time you pause it, it steers to the right. Right, and then but that was the other thing I. Another objective. I mean, I said started with five. Now I'm up to eight. But <laughs> it keeps uh, growing. It keeps growing. But you, that's okay. You, I'm, I'm I'm rehashing that. That's right. Experience. Whole time. Yeah. The other thing I wanted was a round belly, with and the hook slot had to be really really tight. I did not want some fluke lures have that open belly and that channel. Mm-hmm. I wanted the round like a same profile as a, as the belly of a little bait fish that's round. Yeah. And closed, so I didn't want any water channeling it, so that it would glide more. I wanted more of a jerky, jerky, and then when it, when you paused it, it would fall to one side or the other and not glide at a certain angle or glide down. I wanted it to be as irregular and jerky as I could, and by closing that that belly slot as tight as I have, and that irregular motion, you feel like that's that that, that creates that react somewhat of a reaction, yeah, bite, yeah, where they're just it's a wounded bait fish, right? Right. When you work it right. That and a little five-inch finger mullet, it's right there. Well, so, just think about how a mullet jumps. If you ever watch, if you're close enough to see like a mullet come out, jump out of the water, and when he lands, he doesn't just stay cruising right on top. He actually goes down. Mm-hmm. The slick lure does that. Mm-hmm. So I've noticed that the guys that, that we bring on the, the show, we we fish with these guys, right. they all kind of have their own way to work the bait. Oh, yeah. 
And that's been another thing that's interesting to me is like most baits, you kind of do what you do with that bait, you know. But but like say for instance, Bobby is Abrascado is fishing it completely different than yeah. Richard Rutland is fishing it. And I'd be interested to see Patrick how you're how you fish it compared to those two guys. But they're both catching fish and not necessarily any one catching more than the other. More than the I, other. I, and you fish it differently because well, you're fishing it unweighted. Right. In shallower water. Right, right. And and the first time Richard invited me to come down and fish with him, they were fishing it with a bait caster. I fished a spinning reel. Okay. But one of the guys was just really constantly, really slow rolling it. it like what Bobby does. He mm-hmm. reels it really, really slow and kind of rolls he it. He said he rolls it. That's right. That, that was not even in my, again, that was in the, the ether zone to me, how I wanted. That was not <laughs> in my plan of fishing it. I'm more... Because I fish such a shallow water, it's you let it sink real slow. And a lot of times, those big fish, they'll tell you the cadence they want. You know, you get excited, and you see a flash, and you start working it too quick, and you don't get a hit. Mm-hmm. That's why it had to be weedless, because if you let it fall in those rocks where I'm at, it, sometimes it, you let it sit on the bottom, and then pop it really quick, just a really all wrist, you know, not the forearm and, and the elbow. It's a pop really quick, pump, pump. And pop, just get popped and it falls off. What have you seen, Patrick? What? How do you? Well, how, what's your favorite? Uh, way to I got it? a I got a cool story about about the cadence. Is Richard kind of got me going on the on the rod tip up, going pop pop, yeah, and then letting it coast, and then letting it coast down, and then pop pop, and real short little rod snaps. You know, like mm-hmm. like not like dragging it, but like really a, aggressive mm-hmm. pop. I had a good fish, just hit the bait, but didn't commit to it. I threw it back in there three or four more times, same cadence. Then I threw it in there another time, and I just did the old slow roll with just a little like little twitch. Friggin' fish nailed it and caught it, Whacked but it him. committed to it that time. Yeah, and that's what wanted he, something that's a little different. But wanted. yeah, whatever. I mean, whatever whatever happened there, I don't and like, know. It gets back to what you say that that fish tell you what they wanted that day necessarily. Yeah. Right. So you can fish it a number of different ways. Right. Depending on, and I imagine that changes too with the time of year and the water temperature. So we did this thing in June, July. I got, and I learned how to pour plastic, burn up a few microwaves, literally burn, <laughs> literally burn them up. You know, I thought I was going to catch my shed on fire kind of thing. Uh, you know, tore them all up. But I finally got to figure out exactly how, at least I could, you know, put a little bit of color in and mm-hmm. make it look like something like it, the bowl was supposed to be. So this was in June or July and, uh, by October, I had kind of gotten pretty good at it. And in October, uh, new moon, negative tide, first thing in the morning, foot and a half tide over a flooded rock pile. I'm already confused. Uh, out a half mile offshore, I do a 29 and a half inch trout in Florida on this thing. For, for guys listening, like, they don't catch those big trout in Florida. They can't do it like we do it here in Alabama. And, I, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this might work. This might work. Yeah. So, you created this thing to catch the fish on the rocks. I right. assume it worked for the fish on the rocks as well. Yeah. Got it done. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Now. It's a cool story. So, you've got the slick lure. What's next for pure flats? You've got. A uh, little slick. The little slick. Right. The right. Little, little slick. I had been thinking about it for, for a while. Some of the guys that uh, flipping docks on mm. the, with the big slick. Uh, that thing will will skate. They skip it, skipping oh, docks for snook. Kind of like it's the crappie super, guys do. It, it's they a, shoot docks. Yeah, it's a thing, really good uh, bait that, for that throwing. That thing will skip like yeah. a, like a silver dollar. Hmm. Um, some of them were, were targeting snook. Snook at times can be real, real, real finicky and real um, skittish. Mm-hmm. And one of the guys came to me and said that, man, I'm skipping it, and those snook are seeing it, but it's making it's the profile's too big. And it's making too much commotion. Mm-hmm. So why don't you make one smaller? So long story short, through that, and I wanted to do something during the summertime with a jig head fishing in six, eight feet flats. So we came up with the little slick, and um, it's been really, it's been really good. Actually, it's uh, redfish rule. Some guys in Mississippi are fishing on the popping corks. How are they doing? I mean, are they doing well they're fishing doing, under the pop corks? They're doing really well. Because that's obviously a big part of our fishery right. here as well. Right. Uh, you know, certain times of the year, I would say that that's, that's your go-to. Yeah. Right. Um, 
same same deal? Do you need to send it up, or is it just working unscented? It's, How do you rig it? Do you rig it with a same deal owner I, I, hook, or do yeah, you do a jig I'm, head? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I can't fish it on a jig head where I'm at because uh, there's too much grass. You I'm, do, don't I'm, you? I'm just pulling grass. I'll fish with a jig head up here in the river. The yeah. little slip. Yeah, I think it'd be good for foul river too. Yeah, I mean if you're fishing, if you're fishing on the bottom and you're fishing some depth, I'd say probably ten feet or deeper. Yeah, I'd put it on a jig head. Just work it like a grub, you know. Figure out the cadence if they want to hop it or if you want a slow swim or yeah. something like that. We caught some really nice trout on uh, on the cool beans color up here in Mobile River last week. And that was 30 feet down. 30, yeah, 30 feet down. You probably didn't yeah. have a clue anybody was going to put well, something down in 30 June, feet. In June, one of my uh, pro staff guys down in uh, Newport Ritchie, south, just north of Tampa, called me and said uh, the big snook females are spawning off the Anclo Key Beach. We're standing on the beach and we're catching the hell out of them. You, know, you need to come. I said, sure. He said, well, there's only one problem. We can only catch them on live bait. I tried plastic, and they're not working. I got something for that. So, <laughs> but he fishes my stuff a lot. So, anyway, long story short, I fished a little slick, a uh, four-aught weighted one-eighth ounce um, hook, and caught four females um, snook standing on the beach with those guys. Three guys fishing live bait. Yeah. I put four on the beach. They put two on the little slick. And it was totally finesse. Just the tide was coming. I just let it throw it, and the tide would just drift it. I would twitch it, barely twitch it, like every thirty seconds. Well, pa- that's Patrick so was a, talking so about that. So it's a complete. It's the epitome of a of a finesse. You well, you have co- you have control. You cannot control a live bait. I right. mean, for the most part, you you, you right. can only do. You got to count on that live bait to do something. Right. You were talking about that week, this past week, fishing the Mobile River. Yeah. And how I, I just you know if y'all want if y'all want to hear that go back and listen what is it, episode forty nine uh, I think so episode forty nine Patrick has a really in like descriptive analysis of how you were fishing this particular drop off and I love that because you broke that down and so well that it was I literally feel like I could go out there you know and get your numbers out of your GPS t- <laughs> tomorrow and go and fish that that drop off as as well as you did but. But you have control of an artificial bait, and that's what you're saying is that because y'all you knew where the fish were, but because you could lay it right there where they were and and keep movement to a minimum. Yeah, it's 49. Do those things that that was the difference. I, I, I listened. You literally to, caught double the amount of fish. Yeah, there. Well, I was listening to Patrick, and, and it, that's the epitome of what I call staying in contact with your lure. The better artificial anglers have the knack and the know-how of what I call staying in contact with your lure. You can visit, you can, you can envision what that lure is doing, where it is in, on, in that topography, mm-hmm. and, and, and based on the hook and the weight and, and all, what you're, all that together, you can envision what, you can see what it's doing, what, down what there. It's doing and you, yeah. I, yeah. I, what, once you get that, you're, once, you're, you're once, moving to the next level right. of understanding and of that's, that's working where, artificial. That's where, so you're almost there. Right, I'm almost there. Couple, couple more couple, years, couple Pat, more couple trips, and yep. you'll have it. I'll but, get but it dialed it, in. Maybe you could charter like Bobby Ever Scott or one of those guys. I need to. <laughs> I probably need to. <laughs> but it put my this, skills a bit. I'm but put this my beer together, that, that's exactly <laughs> what I was trying. Thank you for the compliment. To be, you know, I, knew, I had that vision, and I knew exactly what I wanted. To, yeah, that's for awesome. It to come out to, to be. That's awesome. I have another uh, project I'm getting ready to start. I've already. Well, I can't wait make, to see what you come out with because I know you're going to nail it the very first time. Yeah, that this you try. one I don't have as much confidence. But, uh, <laughs> oh, come on! You got to be confident. I got enough confidence to start it. It's been uh, I've made a couple phone calls and uh, I've got someone to help me come up with a prototype. Well, well I want to get back a little bit to because I mean it's all well and good to talk about guys that are fishing our area and and how they're having success, but a lot of times ideas new ways to fish and ideas for ways to kind of get ahead come from other other places so tell me a little bit about coastal mississippi because their fisheries not that much different from ours and it sounds like they've switched to that little slick under a popping court and then you've got the versatility at that point to take that little slick and take that popping cork off and fish it down on the bottom are, are that I mean it, it, are they catching them just as well as did, say did, an artificial uh, shrimp um, Captain Mike 
had a post on. Um, this is Mike who? Mike Freeman. Okay. Got Mike Freeman up past Christiane. Uh, boat trash charters. Okay. Out of uh, Mississippi. Uh, he had a post on uh, on social media where he was just fishing a little slick, uh, the mad mullet on a on a jig head, and uh, catching trout, uh, some nice trout. Just under popping cart. No popping cart. Just, oh, just, just freelining it. But in the summertime, when they're when they're chasing school trout on on his charters, he's they fish way more than fifty percent of the time. They're fishing some kind of plastic under a popping cart. So okay, so this question is for Patrick and. And for you as well. So it's it's no secret. Like for me, if I'm going to go catch a speck, if I've got my choice of ways to catch a speckled trout, I'm going to get it. probably going to be at the fish market for you. Right. Well. <laughs> you mean about rod and reel? I mean, I'm not saying I actually ever catch any. Okay. One could imagine. If I'm going to go do it, I'm getting in the water. I'm waiting. And I'm going to fish in springtime somewhere similar to the west end of Dolphin Island. I just enjoy being in the water. Uh, that's just my personal thing. And, and, and I do feel like being in the water versus being on a boat helps me get closer to bigger fish. I'm not a, as good of a fisherman as Patrick, Richard, Bobby, those guys. But my biggest fish have come from the surf. So if I, if I take the slick out this spring, that question's twofold. If I go out this spring, if I'm out fishing the surf, do I need to be fishing the slick? Or the little slick, and do I need to be fishing weighted or unweighted? That's a that's a that's a day to day that's a day to day condition condition kind of thing. Okay, you know, if you have a lot of current, rip current, yeah, rip that, current, mm-hmm. you know, it's really really mm-hmm. strong. Yeah. you're gonna have to put probably put have to put a weight on there because it's just gonna take that take that slick that unweighted, unweighted slick. slick. It's gonna leave it on the top and and just whip it whip it out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you got a real nice calm day early in the morning and there's a bunch of bait. In the trough itself, probably uh, go unweighted. That one weighted would, would probably work real well. But then if they're on the backside of, of the second bar and a little deeper water, you got to make an extra long cast. Then out, you know, you may need some weight. When would I choose the little slick versus the slick? If I wanted to fish under a popping cork, or yeah, what would what would make me switch over to that that little slick? What scenario do you see playing out where I where I do that? Is that is that a, is that a bait if I'm going to fish? I want to fish it closer to the bottom. I made the little slick. My intention was to fish it uh, in a little deeper water with a jig, jig a head. little finesse jig combo. I'm not a real personally. I'm not a real big popping cart guy. Mm-hmm. Okay, that doesn't mean that they're not effective. No, he's looking down his nose at everybody. Uh, popping no, cork. No, no, no. <laughs> I should get that mess out. Probably of need to take that back. Oh, <laughs> you fish a popping cork, huh? Okay. Rookie. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, I got something I can add to that is uh, I was throwing a big slick in an area where I f- was pretty dang confident there were some fish. And every once in a while, I'd get kind of a thump, but it wasn't like a real hard thump like they were actually trying to commit to the big slick. And I switched over to the little slick. And that, with an unweighted hook, Just I was working it to where I would bring it up all the way to the surface and then just let it slowly glide all the way to the bottom. And they were picking it up right right before it hit the bottom. Hmm. Like, they weren't hitting it once it was on the bottom. So, in that case, the jig head wouldn't have worked for me, I don't I don't think, because they were only hitting it on the fall. And it's a real slow fall. They wanted that flutter. It, yeah, and that, and that little slick has a lot more tail wag to it. It, it has a different tendency in the water. Mm-hmm. It, almost, it almost does more swimming um, than, the, than the big slick. The big slick just kind of dies off. Mm-hmm. But the little slick has a little bit more See, swim action, a little tail action. It's going back to those snook, those snook fishermen down in in, uh, in southwest Florida where they knew those snook were underneath the docks and that big slick had too much profile and too much noise. And that little slick was way – that's the epitome of finesse. They started skipping it under there, and that snook would just suck it up. Now I did 37-inch snook on, the, on that little bitty thing where – Patrick had enough. He was observant enough to, to recognize that they're they're looking for a smaller. That's what they wanted. They're, right. they're looking for something smaller. Let me let me go to that smaller profile. So it's you're just covering both both scenarios. It kind sure. of gives you. Well, let's see. We've we've figured out a way to fish some version of the slick lure from from thirty feet down to basically six inches of water. Yeah. Maybe we'll call this show like five ways to fish a slick lure. 
And maybe by the by the time we produce it, it may be ten ways to fish right. the sweet water. <laughs> right, and I, that happens. And I, I keep going back to uh, if if I can help people become a better fisherman angler with the slick is please use the owner beast four aught hook, either weighted or unweighted. Just take my advice on that. That's a big part of it. Right. That's still good here. That hook is designed to. When you rig it properly, you can go to my website, you know, pureflats.com. I have a little two two minute video on how to rig it. It's critical. You rig that hook cr- properly. It's perfectly balanced. It comes out right at the center of the back. It's perfectly balanced. the The weighted version of the hook, when it falls, it falls on. It falls basically horizontal. I mean, that's how cr- balanced it is. With the unweighted hook, it, it will fall a little bit with the nose down somewhat because you have more weight on there's a center print spring, spring there but the unweighted lure drops um six inches every second it's good to know so it's like a foot and a half and yeah well you just like kind of like when we fish offshore we're always one mississippi mm-hmm. two mississippi yeah you just got to figure out what you're fishing well, with too. the thing i like about that is that you've nailed that down so now we got a way to say okay we're gonna throw it out there and we'll let it drop 12 inches if you don't get a bite, try 24, try 18. You're kind right. of able, and, to, able to figure but it out. But, but going the back, you know, by yeah. water, that was not it. You know, it's amazing <laughs> me how, how versatile this. Because you built it for yourself. Yeah. I, and I had no, <laughs> for shallow water fishing. It's like I wasn't worried about, you know, how deep I was fishing. It, you know, I was you worried, knew what you needed. Yeah. 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 And, and, and it worked out to be really, really versatile. That's well, cool, man. Well, well Joey. Thanks for creating it because for sure. uh, a lot of people are catching some really f- phenomenal trout. Uh, it's, it's definitely changed changed the fishing scene uh, in this Certainly. area, no no doubt about it. If folks haven't heard of it by now and want to get in touch with you or they want to buy the Slick Lure online, how do they do it? You can go to Pure Flats, P-U-R-E, pureflats.com or theslicklure.com. Either one will hook you up to my website. And I have a shopping cart there. Nice. I have the little slick and, and the large slick, or the slick and little slick. Um, I'm also selling um, uh, the owner hook. Okay. The, the owner hooks online if they have a hard – they're not easy hooks to find. It's not every shop carries them. Mm-hmm. They're, they're premium hooks, and, and um, they're expensive. I mean – Well, a lot of Butch's friends live out in the middle of nowhere. They, they probably don't even have the internet yet. Uh, probably not. But uh, – I don't. If, it's impossible to get in a foul river. It's if miserable. they want to get them in a retail location, you're in, you're in just about every re- retail location in, in, yeah, here, in coastal Alabama. Yeah, McCoy's here. Shirley's. Uh, Shirley's is carrying them now. What's the place down in Fairhope? The sky. Uh, Fairhope Fly Shop. Fairhope Fly Shop. Um, tackle, tackle this. Shoot tackle that. this. Shoot that. Uh, J and M Tackles carrying them now in Orange Beach. Uh, Marshall Marine down in uh, Bay La Batra. Awesome. Excellent. Well, Joey, Ooh. thanks for being on the show, man. I appreciate it. We, uh, we, we appreciate what you do, and uh, can't wait to see what you come out with next. Me too. I'm excited. Good deal. Thanks. This week's Fishing Report is brought to you by Angelo Di Paola. The coastal connection with EXP Realty, your boating and beach property specialist. Check me out on Facebook at Angelo Di Paola Realtor, the coastal connection, or call me direct at 850-287-3440. And also, Killer Doc. Are you suffering from doc dysfunction? Check out a full line of doc enhancement at KillerDoc.com. That's KillerDoc.com. And also, Trotter Marine. Call Ray or Burns at 251-679-5959 or check them out at TrotterMarineLLC.com. Also brought to you by GEICO. Call Ron Davis, GEICO agent at 251-445-0053 or visit him online at geico.com slash mobile dash AL. And also A-Team Fishing Adventures. Check them out online at www.ateamfishing.com or contact them at 251-661-7696. And also Great Days Outdoors, the South's finest hunting and fishing magazine. Pick up your copy wherever magazines are sold or check them out at greatdaysoutdoors.com.